Hi and welcome to our third instalment of this little discussion, this simple brief discussion on theoretical and skill techniques within Wing Chun, the Wong Sibling system. Today, Yong Chai is going to help me to take the next stage whereby we talked about the single hand chi cell drill. The double hand chi cell drill is basically the same exercise divided across the two hands. So there's still the two basic skills of Tan and Bong which started the original drill, but we also now have a deflected punching action. Sometimes we call it deflected foot cell, but it's representing a punch that's been knocked away. Now, the purpose of the rolling action is to help build up the same idea as the first drill, but now it's on two sides at once, and you're doing two different hand actions at the same time. So we're learning to multitask as it sounds, because we're having to do completely different things on each side. I've got to keep one elbow down and constantly protecting the center, while the other elbow is moving from one position to another, depending on the energy that's coming from my opponent. Now, this is also like the first drill, building up forward energy. So if I was to remove my hands, Jung Tri's hands come forward without him having to think about that. It's just automatic. And if he tries coming through my guard and trying to do something to attack me, my reaction is already there instantaneously because I'm providing some energy, he's providing some energy, so it's like two springs being coiled up and as soon as one of them is released, it attacks. Then he can try to do any kind of attacking motion that he wants to try and get in and it will stimulate my body to shift and allow my hands to counter. In our family, we have five very simple ways that we practice that, which involve coming down the inside, coming over the top, doing a, a deflection on the inside, puck cell attack. We have an action where we do a, what we call chum kill fuck cell, and usually the other one that we practice a lot is a gun cell. There's no need, we find, to have dozens of ways to attack. These five methods give us enough information to be able to experiment and try things. So, Jung can try any one of those attacks, and it should stimulate a response from my hands. So I don't need to see what he's doing, I can feel what he's doing. If I try to get in on him, if he doesn't know how to control me, I'm already in. If he's sensitive to my attack, then he can shut it down. So by constantly working this drill with a variety of inputs, it helps bring out your natural instinct of reacting to pressure change and loss of pressure, as opposed to something very deliberate and obvious. Because in a real fighting situation, Anything can happen in the shortest space of time and you have to be sensitive enough to feel that. Which takes us to the next point that I want to bring into this little discussion before we end it for now. And that is, we do not use chi sao as an alternative to sparring or fighting. What it is, is a means to train a certain set of reactions and reflexes because in fighting, ideally, as we said in the very first of these clips, when he throws a punch at me, I want to hit him. But it doesn't always go to that plan. Sometimes I want to hit him and his hand hits him away. Well, I can't stand here for the next five minutes thinking about what do I do now or try to figure it out because he's going to hit me. I've got to be able to instantly just change to the next technique. And this is why we do chi because the path is not always open. I want to get in, there's things in the way. So I've got to be able to respond without needing to process it in my mind. This is why sometimes we do chi sao with a blindfold, because that way I can't be tempted to try and see the problem, I have to feel the problem. But more on that in another one. We'll see you again on the next one.